Thank you for dialing into this Euro PCR 2021 session. The focus of this short presentation is the treatment of bicuspid aortic stenosis by TAVI, and particularly with respect to CT planning and sizing algorithms. I'm joined by two outstanding TAVI interventionists. Uh, firstly, Sonia Petronio, Professor Sonia Petronio from Pisa, Italy, and Professor Amit Segev from Sheba Medical Center in Israel. All three of us are regularly managing and treating uh, bicuspid aortic patients with TAVI devices. And indeed, we've all contributed to the literature and improved the understanding of how these procedures can be optimized. I think we can all agree that um, CT planning is absolutely critical. And um, on this slide, we are describing the various categories of bicuspid phenotypes. I think the most well-known is the SEVAS type, which describes the number of RAFE, type zero, no RAFE, type one, by far the most common phenotype with one RAFE, and type two, which is really quite rare. But I think from a, a TAVI implanter's point of view, the more useful algorithms describe the number of, uh, uh, whether the, there is bicommissural without RAFE or tricommissural. And it's only when we understand this anatomy from CT, which is so important, that we can have successful procedures with TAVI devices. And there is a plethora of data on outcomes, but I think the data clearly show that understanding the anatomy by CT is the key to success. I'll go on to Sonia to go through in detail the sizing al algorithm for one of her recent patients. Oh, thank you, Chris. Yes, it's uh, uh, sizing on microspeed is a very intriguing uh, uh, subject uh, and it is very important to understand exactly what you are going to see if you scroll up and down a CT like this one. This is an example of a patient uh, that you can see on uh, one side the amount of calcium which is very typical of bicuspid and the calcium distribution is all, also very important. It can be uh, one side or it can be um, quarterly all over the place, like in this example. Here we see that the analysis uh, measurement, which is something you really need to do, it is a very, it's very wide, it's let's say an off-label uh, measurement of more than 30. And if you go up uh, through the uh, sinus of Malsalva and the shape, you can analyze exactly how is the amount and the wide of the diameter in the intercommissural side. And you can approach here, this is a kind of bicuspid one, how long and how calcified can be the raffe, which is an entity that will never move a lot when you expand the valve. And then you go upwards and you see exactly the amount of calcium that can be through all the system. Well, here it is a summary of all the measurements that we are able to do in that certain um, CT. And we could see here the annulus measurement of the patient was over 30 millimeters. And we know that there are not many valves. I would say it is very difficult to find a valve to fill in an annulus wide like that. And then you can see the intercommissural at four millimeters height from the annulus plane, which is 29.7. And then we have another kind of system to measure it, which is the Lira plane that measured it on the height exactly where you're able to see the raffe. And then finally, the algorithm that we use, which is the Casper metered that looks the annulus and points out the two other questions, the length of the raffe and the calcium volume. And depending on that, we can subtract or not the amount of millimeters on the measurement that we has done on the annulus. So there is many kinds of sizing you can do. And well, I would like uh, to ask to Ahmed, what is your point of view? I mean, why you think it is uh, your way of measurement, it is important to measure it always in that way. Can you tell us exactly what is your feeling and your way of using bicuspid? Yes, Sonia, thank you very much. This is a, really a great example of a, bi, of a specific bicuspid anatomy. And, you know, beside the cross-sectional assessment of the morphology of the valve, as showed by Chris, 
in these cases, it is crucial to assess the longitudinal measurements, meaning that um, you know there are certain uh, morphological uh, uh, assessment that you have to uh, measure by CT. In one third of the patient, the, the anatomy is tubular, as in tricuspid valve, but in the majority of the cases, you have two certain appearances of a bicuspid valve, and the most uh, important one and the most common one is what we call a tapered anatomy, meaning that you have, as you said, as you showed in this case, a large annulus, in this case 30.7, but the most important measurement here is the intercommissural measurements that is measured between four millimeters and eight millimeters. You have to assess the, the lower, the, 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 the minimal measurements uh, uh, above the true annulus. We call it a virtual annulus. Uh, in this case, as you can see, we have a tapered anatomy, meaning that the intercommissural measurement is less than the true annulus. And in these cases, you have to rely uh, on the uh, intercommissural measurement, which is uh, 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 less than the annulus. Uh, uh, 29.7, and in, in these cases, of course, you have to da, uh, 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 undersize the valve that you use, and uh, in this case, uh, although you have a case which is beyond the 34 millimeter valve, you can actually uh, be safe and uh, try to uh, implant a 34 millimeter based on the tapered anatomy. In terms of uh, how do you implant, you know, you have to, because you rely on the, what I call a virtual annulus, the uh, implantation uh, 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 in relation to the true annulus should be at zero. You have to uh, implant at zero in the annulus and uh, try to uh, uh, implant as much as you can supraannulary in order the valve to accommodate the minimal diameter of the valve, which is four, sometimes it's even more than four. Sometimes the, 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 the minimal diameter is actually at eight millimeters uh, above, uh, above the valve. So this is a very good example of a case of a tapered anatomy. I have to say that in some cases you have the opposite. You have a flared anatomy, which is totally different. This is why it is so crucial to assess the longitudin longitudinal a anatomy of, of the case, in a flared anatomy, you have actually to oversize the valve. And if this was the case in here, it's probably a, a beyond a, the, our TAVI a, a options. So a, a good case of tapered anatomy, you have to undersize the valve and rely on the intercommissural measurements, which is a, again, four millimeters. So the, this is, this is a very nice example of a CT imaging post-TAVI. On the left, you can see the pre-analysis with the intercommissural uh, measurements. And on the right, you can see the expansion of the transcatheter valve uh, at the level of the intercommissural uh, 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 junction where you can really see that, that the valve doesn't fill the true annulus, but it accommodates very well in a circular way uh, the minimal uh, sizing of the intercommissural measurement. So I think it's, it's a great example of how, how uh, a, a TAVI valve accommodates in a bicuspid anatomy. So, so Chris, maybe back to you. How, how do you decide between the different THV valves in, in this specific bicuspid anatomy? Well, thank you, Amit. I mean, this, this CT was a great example just to show the point that, that this valve is sealing high in the leaflets. I mean, I, I think the choice of device is always going to be the subject of debate. debate. And I think it is worth mentioning at this point that you should approach every case with a heart team MDT and there is still going to be a large subsection of patients who would benefit from surgical AVR as opposed to TAVI. Um, I mean, most implanters will default to the device that they are most comfortable with. And for me, that's certainly the Evolute platform. It has good control, it's got good safety. Uh, the leaflets are super annular, so it gives very favorable hemodynamics. But I know, and I've seen data from centers using other valves and balloon expanding valves where, where really excellent results are being achieved. 
I think only an Evlu platform could have been used. Um, and I think even five years ago, I would have looked at this anatomy and thought that this couldn't be treated by TAVI. And, and it's only really by a lot of the work that's been published in the last few years by, 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 by you guys, by Sonia particularly, that have allowed us as implanters to understand how these TAVI valves behave in the anatomy. Um, so for me, in this case, it's been an Evolute platform uh, every day of the week. And uh, Sonia, you've got your result there and it looked very good to me. Why don't you just briefly talk through the procedure and uh, how you implanted it? And obviously the result looked pretty good there. Well, uh, we study a lot, as you said, the CT confirmation. And uh, as you know, we, we are not measuring the intercommissural diameter, but we are doing something very similar to a MIT. We just stick to the analysis and then look how the raphate's long and the amount of calcium. And then we can oversize, undersize, or take the same size of the analyst according to these measurements. Because it's very important to understand, like you have said, that the shape of the, uh, of the space inside the valve can change. This, luckily, was a tapered valve, and we were able to reach uh, uh, a size of under 30 millimeters without having problems. Of course, with a, a height implant, this is what we have done. And with a, let's say, small pre-dilatation balloon, which we, is very important to undersize. But uh, what I will like to uh, underline is that we, with younger patient, as we probably will be able to treat in the next years, we will have to consider the height of the valve according to the height of the coronary arteries. So this is really a study of sizing an implant where CT is really, really the principal image that we can uh, look carefully and understand. Yeah, that, I mean, that's an excellent point, isn't it? I mean, bicuspid prevalence is, is higher in younger patients. Just because we can do a TAVI, it, it might ought not always be the correct decision for that patient. You know, retreatment, revalving is a critical value. I mean, it, it struck me, Sonia, that um, even though there were multiple algorithms displayed, and indeed there are other algorithms out there, the actual output was, was very similar, wasn't it? It was, it was just under 30 and, and, and just in a treatment range. So the algorithms are complex, uh, some of them are complex and some of them are simple, but they, they do tend to give a, a similar result. And perhaps it, it's just the understanding and it's the forcing you to analyze the CT as you've done by scrolling through the outflow tract, which is the key to understanding how your valve is going to, to behave. Well, that was a great session. I, I mean, I, I, I hope you've benefited from some of the world experts on this. Um, TAVI in bicuspid anatomy can be done with a high degree of success, but it's critical to plan the procedure thoroughly and to understand the anatomy. The CT is the absolutely critical part of that. Um, I hope you go away from the session having absorbed some of that and take it back to your practice in your regular hospitals. Thank you very much to my colleagues, Sonia Petronio and Amit Segev, and we'll wish you a good day. Bye. Bye. Bye-bye.